who's here? Good morning, everyone. This is Luna, my little girl kitty. She's always keeping me company while I'm doing my, my, yes, yes, yes. It's time to go to work. No, no, it's time to go to work. No playing. It's time to go to work. Come on, stay in your perch. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Coffee and Headlines. We get together every morning to look at what's going on around the world. We get together to connect with one another. If uh, you have been with us before, it's great to see you back. If you are joining us for the first time, we meet every morning at 1030 Puerto Vallarta time, and we spend half an hour or so together, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. If this is your first uh, time joining us, grab a nice cup of coffee. Um, please type the word new in your comments so that we know that you're new here and we can give you a proper welcome. And, um, and we're going to get going. We have all kinds of interesting, fun things to share with you today. Uh, some news about the coronavirus pandemic, of course, and also um, some leisure and entertainment news about fun things that are coming on on television that uh, we can enjoy in, in the days to come. Let's start with a few headlines uh, because there was this thing that I mentioned yesterday about um, the stay-at-home campaign in Mexico extended until the 30th of May. This was announced yesterday morning by Hugo lopez Gatel as part of the morning press conference that the president of Mexico, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, gives every morning. Um, the news were quite fresh yesterday morning when I shared them, and I noticed some commentary online about, well, is this true? Is this not true? Somebody told me uh, this was not confirmed, so forth and so on. And um, if you look at the graphic, this is Lopez Gatel standing in front of an audience, the president of Mexico standing behind him. So it doesn't get more true than that, at least here in Mexico. And I mentioned that because there is a lot of good intention in uh, the minds and hearts of people that post things online. Um, unfortunately, when those things are accompanied by a phrase that says something along the lines of, I heard that, or somebody told me that, um, then the, <clears throat> the credibility of the source goes into question. Uh, here in this space, we've endeavored to uh, do daily research on news items that, that come from reliable sources. We have listed um, publications that I think are a representative of the most credible publications in Mexico, and we will continue to do this. We will continue to try to make sure that everything we share with you in this space comes from reliable sources. And whereas in the past, I've been leaving links to um, things that we mentioned in the program in English only, I will now also begin to uh, post all the links in the show notes of uh, sources that come uh, from, from within Mexico, sources in Spanish. Even if you don't understand them, I want to make sure that you feel confident knowing that, to the best of my ability, the information that we share in this space is credible and it is reliable. Okay. Now that I've gotten that out of my chest, let me move on to something that might be reassuring to some. Uh, studies published by El Heraldo de Mexico, another very credible newspaper in Mexico, says that restaurants will be the first to recover from the crisis in Mexico, along with uh, leisurely activities, travel, and hotels. This will start not in the near future. It will start um, sometime uh, between August and September. This is according to a studio made uh, by a company called Metrics. And they show these very interesting graphs that show the progressive recovery of our country um, as we move forward in time. Again, this is a study in Spanish. 
I will put the link for this in the show notes. And I will also make reference to this on an article that I'm writing today uh, about that restaurant survey that we um, that we published last week. More people have continued to answer it, and I think it reveals even more insights that I'm sure a number of people will be curious to read. It's not the end of the world. There's a little over 100 people that responded, so it's not something that would be representative of the entire population, but I do think it gives us some some ideas of, of what's to be expected in the minds and the hearts of those of us that make the decision to support these businesses or not. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, thanks to some suggestions that came from some of you, we've decided to put together a nice list of streaming uh, opportunities um, of, of wonderful shows and performances that are coming up in the next few days. And I want to share those with you as part of the program. And let me start by showing you uh, da, 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 da. this one, uh, the Globe Players, the Globe Theater, which is Shakespeare's most representative space where he did a lot of his um, a lot of his uh, plays, um, is beginning is premiering their production of Romeo and Juliet in three days. Um, we showed a little bit of the Hamlet that they did last week, and it was very, very exciting. It is quite comforting that um, that a lot of the people, a lot of the productions that they put together have English subtitles. So this is spoken in English, of course, but uh, sometimes Shakespearean English might be a little bit challenging for some of us, certainly for me, even though I speak English fairly well. Um, I find that Shakespearean English or English with heavy accents is a little hard on my ears. <clears throat> so I very much welcome the fact that these productions have subtitles. Um, and uh, we also have a new production at the National Theater. Uh, this is called uh, Treasure Island. This started streaming yesterday. National Theater is premiering one play per week. And um, I'm going to share with you the, the trailer for this one because it's quite exciting. I hope I don't get shut down for playing this. But check this out. How exciting is that? How exciting is that? Oh, somebody's singing. Why is somebody singing? Hold on. We don't want to play that right now. Um, how exciting is that? Isn't that amazing? And it's live. Well, it's not live for us. Obviously, we're watching a pre-recorded performance of this. But these are real people doing um, really exciting stuff online and stages that move and sound effects and light effects and stuff. This is live theater. So it's very exciting to see that this is going on. Um, there is a YouTube channel called The Shows Must Go On, and they have been showing full performances of Andrew Lloyd Webber's um, musicals. And the one that has just become available, and this is only available for 48 hours due to um, rights restrictions and so forth and so on. Now we can watch The Phantom of the Opera live. Uh, if you like grand uh, productions and, and the mega musicals that Andrew Lloyd Webber has put together, um, this is something else that you can enjoy at least uh, for the next two days. I seriously recommend that uh, we find some time to sit down in front of the TV, uh, connect your YouTube, and go for it. Um, the Metropolitan Opera continues to produce um, their nightly Met Opera streams, which means that every night there's a new opera that becomes available. Um, and. Um, each performance is available for 23 hours. So uh, their schedule for the next few days includes, um, starting on Monday, we have Vorjak's Rosalka. Um, on Tuesday, we have Mussorgsky's Boris Godunov, uh, Puccini's La Rondine on Wednesday, uh, Rossini's Le Contorie on Thursday, and Viewer's Choice on Friday, that is a week from today, Madame Butterfly. Um, and, and they continue. Every week they're uh, doing different different operas, as you can see. Um, and the beautiful thing about the operas that are produced by the Met, I don't know if you've ever seen one, but they include all kinds of wonderful behind-the-scenes 
takes and close-ups and interviews with the performers. And as you can see here, uh, let me put this up a little bit. There's supplementary content that is included for each one of the operas, synopsis, articles, a short video featurette, so that we can all get better immersed in, into the world of opera, which is a lot more entertaining than we know. Um, um, Alain Perrault uh, recommended this article yesterday from Time Out, which is now calling themselves Time In. I think that's really cute. Of um, the best theater to watch online right now. I'm going to give you the link to this in the show notes. And this is something that uh, features all kinds of things that we've already mentioned, but it also features other things. For example, um, uh, let's see, let's see, a ballet adaptation of 1984 that is streaming for free. This is um, uh, George Orwell's um, very important piece. Um, watch one of Japan's best kabuki plays for free is another one. Um, Metropolitan we've mentioned. Um, and then there's, a, there's another one uh, that, from a theater in Berlin that is streaming a play every night for free as well. So again, there is no excuse for those of us that love theater and stage works to get excited um, and, um, and check them out. Paul tells me uh, today is the 17th. Those Met operas I'm describing are in the past. It is quite possible. I haven't had my coffee yet. Um, actually, no. Check it out. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Monday, April. Oh, yes. You are right, Paul. Some of these have already happened. Madame Butterfly is tonight. I stand corrected. You are indeed correct. So these are not last week's operas. These, are, these were this week's operas. So tonight, if you have um, nothing else to do, is a good night to stream Madame Butterfly. Thank you for that, Paul. Um, going back to where we were, um, again, lots of interesting sources. In contrast, um, I found this very insightful and thought-provoking piece in the New York Magazine called How Can Broadway Recover from This Pandemic? Um, and it's definitely worth a, re a read for those of us that enjoy Broadway shows um, and that want to make sure that we can continue to uh, enjoy this, these types of performances. Uh, last but not least, I mentioned um, the Detroit Symphony Orchestra a website before. I'm going to mention it again because they include a huge, huge collection of concerts. There are 13 concerts from their 1920 season. Uh, 20 concerts from the 2018 to 19, uh, 24 concerts from the year before, 10 concerts from the year before. So there's a lot of, of wonderful music to be enjoyed online. And this is pretty much um, what we have in terms of performances that we can enjoy online. And I think this is a good time to say some hellos uh, to people that watch us every morning. Kathleen Kathleen sent me a nice long um, message yesterday. She's been keeping quite busy um, with personal projects and projects related to Licks, their ice cream store, and I'll be sharing more of that in days to come. Um, Catherine, Rita, Christy, Jeremiah, it's nice to see you. Uh, Eddie, same thing. Paul, uh, Ken Morrison, are you in town or are you in Cuernavaca? Where are you, Ken? It's always good to bump into you uh, when I uh, am out and about in the city. Marge, uh, it's nice to see you. Michal, it's great to see you. Um, Kathleen, I look forward to your comments on Romeo and Juliet and Treasure Island. I know that you enjoy these types of performance quite a bit. Um, Kathleen, um, Paso and Lon, you're doing a fabulous job. Thank you. I think you're doing a fabulous job too. I do. Paolo, we shared your music yesterday. I hope some people got to download it and enjoy it as much as I do. Uh, Michal tells us she'll be watching. And Tim, uh, uh, thanks for the clarification on the May, uh, May 30th thing. Yes, indeed, Tim. You know, it's... Um, I want to touch on another aspect of all these things that we read online. I don't know what your experience is like, but sometimes I find that I need to stop. And uh, as much as I wish to hear 
and read the good intentions from a lot of people, sometimes I need to find time for myself and say, okay, for the next hour, for the next half an hour, for the next half a day, I'm going to tune out of the news. I'm going to tune out of the world and just give myself some inner peace, read, meditate, do whatever I can to keep things in balance. I think this is really important to all of us. And, um, uh, and I want to tell you about how I, about how I, I I had a little mini meltdown yesterday, and it came from the silliest of things. Um, as I reported, let me get comfortable because I'm going to get personal. There we go. Um, yesterday, as I said, I was going to go to supermarket because I wanted to get uh, ingredients for uh, curry dish that I that I shared yesterday. The good news is the curry was fantastic. I added some potatoes and I added some chicken because I had to, but it was really, really good. But um, I dare confess to a little bit of, um, uh, there's a little obsessive compulsive in me. And when I go to supermarket, when I go grocery shopping, I know where to find things. And I like to, um, to, approach the supermarket in a methodic way. Um, that's just the way I do it. So yesterday I get into into La Comer and boom, I get this. So La Comer is now, they've labeled their aisles so that you can only go one way and then the other on the next aisle. Now, this makes a lot of sense for La Comer because their aisles are a little bit on the narrow side. They're trying to keep us safe. They're trying to keep us healthy. But guess what? Their, their directions of traffic are completely the opposite of how I'm used to walking that supermarket. So it sounds stupid. But for me, it was, it was difficult to navigate the supermarket yesterday. Um, it, 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 it was challenging. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure it's no big deal to many people, but to me it was. I couldn't find things. I found myself lost. Um, and then I saw a lot of people wearing face masks. And, um, and then I thought to myself, well, I have a face mask. Why am I not wearing a face mask? And I came to realize that even as science argues about whether face masks are good or bad, even when we read a lot online about people that are using them and people that are choosing not to use them and whether they're thick enough or not. I came to the realization yesterday that the reason I'm not wearing my face mask is because as long as I don't wear it, I am not having to acknowledge the new normal. And that just had me sitting down on my chair and I realized I need to wear a face mask and I need to wear a face mask because it is safe or it might be safe and it might protect me from others or it might protect others from me. But most importantly, I think I need to wear a face mask because part of me needs to take that step that allows us to fully begin appreciating this new reality that we're going to be living in for some time. And that's what I need to do for myself. And I thank you for letting me share this little insight with you. And um, and you won't see me wearing a face mask here, of course, because, you know, we are at home, so forth and so on. But I'm going to start wearing one in public. Uh, I'll tell you how that goes for others. It might not be a big deal for me. It seems to be. Um, moving right along, I do want to tell you that I found this at, uh, at, um, at, La, at La Comer. It's alcohol in gel form. It's not the cleaning gel that we're used to. I asked if they have something. They're still not carrying these kinds of products. They're in short supply. But I also found a, let me see, da dun 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 Let's get out of music mode and let me tell you that I found a homemade sanitizer recipe. And this is endorsed by the World Health Organization. Um, there's a formula for hand sanitizer that includes very basic ingredients that I 
no, we cannot find in the supermarket. And then there's also one for gel sanitizer, um, which involves using aloe vera gel. Uh, these are all very easy to make. So if we're feeling a little crazy about what's our interaction with things we touch out and about and how we do uh, this constant maintenance that we need to learn. We need to learn now to constantly wash our hands. Uh, we need to learn not to reach out for our faces. We need to learn all kinds of new habits. And, um, and nobody's exempt from it. You know, the whole world is having to learn all these things. I also want to share with you another piece of news. Um, <clears throat> this uh, is another article that I read in uh, El Heraldo, and this tells us that Google Maps now tells you the perfect time to go out and go shopping so that you can avoid crowds. So I decided to put this to the test, and I'm going to show you whether it is true or not. Um, let me see. I'm going to show you. Ooh, check it out. Trust this computer. Of course, we're going to trust this computer. Um, and what I want to show you is the Google Maps application. Let's see. I'm going to go into Google and I'm going to search um, Walmart Macro Plaza, which is near my home. And as I scroll down, I can see over here this little graphic. Can you see it? It shows me uh, that these are the most popular time to go to the supermarket is 7. Oh, the best time to go is 7 p.m. It's usually not too busy um, and so forth and so on. And it gives you this chart for every single day of the week. Now, it is, it is not available for every place yet. For example, yesterday I tried to find La Comer and I'm going to try to find La Comer again. Uh, they must be still updating their information, but there is La Comer, and if I go in, it still doesn't show me the busy times at La Comer. So, but I checked a couple of supermarkets in town, and most of the supermarkets are represented, and I'm sure that as Google continues to increase their... Um, their coverage and their, uh, their, their as they continue to dig data from our cell phones, they're going to be able to offer this information. Um, let's see, we have a lengthy message from Erika Larios. I'm going to try to put this. This is this is a mouthful. I'm going to put it out, and I'm just going to tell you that this comes from Georgia Darashori who it tells us that um, they're putting together meals and they're going to be shared between noon and 2 p.m. from Monday to Friday in their, um, in the facilities um, in DIVAC, y solo con voluntad, which is a local uh, nonprofit. They are located at Mike Lemus 151, uh, Colonia Los Cajos. Um, this is across from the Crystal Hotel. Um, and she's asking for people that are having a hard time work finding work or having a hard time getting food that they can go and um, and collaborate with this endeavor. Erika, thank you very much for sharing. Um, it's great to hear these news items. My best wish for you is that you will not only share it with us, but you will share it on Facebook. I would love to brag about having a huge audience. The audience gets bigger and bigger every day, and I couldn't be more grateful to those of you who keep coming back, but really share th this information on Facebook. Um, send it as press releases to the media. Uh, people should all know about these important uh, steps that the community makes to help others. Um, thank you very much for your kind words, uh, Rita. Um, yes, this is a very vulnerable time for all of us. Um, it is uh, It is difficult. I was telling someone, a friend of mine this morning, that as much as I'd like to praise the fact that I live here with my kitty, there are some times in which I do feel there was another human living in the house. So there are days with clear blue skies. There are days with really 
dark clouds looming above my head and I'm sure everybody's head. We've said this before, we'll say it again. These are the times in which we have to reach out to others. And I am grateful because um, by having this daily uh, space with you, I get to share a little bit of what's going on with my life. I get to hear what's going on with yours. I get to share information that is important to you. You get to share information that is important to you. So uh, I like to believe that we all gain a little bit more of extra purpose as we get together on a daily basis. So it is Friday. Um, it is a weekend. So remember weekend? It's a time to have some fun and, and, and do something leisurely. So find some time in your busy schedules to watch some of this wonderful uh, television um, that we have to, to share and enjoy in the next few days. I will continue to report on important matters, but I will also continue to look for things that uh, that can help us move forward as we continue to explore this new life that lies ahead of us together. I wish you a most excellent day, and I thank you in advance for sharing news about this program with your friends, and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Have a great Friday.